Some are too young to remember, but if you remember the 80s, you'll remember this. In this decade, radios, TV stations, and media would talk about one specific subject, and it would scare everybody. They would say that there is a hole in the ozone layer, and it's letting all the dangerous sun rays enter the atmosphere. The hole in the ozone they would show was ginormous. The hole was the size of continental USA, and it hovered on Antarctica. Scientists would say, if this hole gets any bigger, until the year 2050, the ozone layer is completely destroyed. This was something that you couldn't easily pass up, because if there's no ozone layer, you have to say goodbye to life on Earth. Even if it doesn't get destroyed and it gets weak, the sun rays is gonna cause skin cancer all over the world. But what happened? The ozone is repairing itself, and the hole is getting smaller day by day. This was a problem that actually got solved with the help of people. So how does this happen? It's because the entire world actually got together and helped each other. So in what way did they cooperate with each other? You should know that the atmosphere has three different layers and the most important one is in the middle called the ozone layer. As you know, the sun radiation is extremely dangerous for us, but the ozone basically stops the dangerous rays that comes off from the sun. Radiation like UVB and UVC. There's a bunch of radiation in space and you could say the atmosphere is like a shield that stops all that stuff from coming inside Earth. But this shield is not steel, and it's very fragile. In the year 1985, scientists realized that there is a hole in the ozone layer at the size of the continental USA over Antarctica. When they realized how big the hole is, they got extremely scared. They realized they had to do something because the Earth's shield was beginning to get destroyed. This is Dr. Susan Solomon. She is an atmospheric chemist, and she was one of the most important scientists that solved the issue. Because of her expertise, in the year 1985, she was appointed to go with a group of scientists to Antarctica so they could investigate and study the atmosphere and see why there is a hole there. In the year 1986, the group of scientists landed on Antarctica. They bought all the equipment they need, and one of them was a balloon. And they basically sent these to space to measure the ozone layer. There was a sensor on these balloons that could measure the percentage of gases in the atmosphere. After a lot of research, they realize that the problem is chlorofluorocarbon, and the short version is CFC. CFCs are not dangerous for humans. This gas is on types of sprays, especially disinfectant, and the gas was also seen in refrigerators and AC units. When CFCs get to the atmosphere, they're turned into chlorine, and when the chlorine mixes with the ozone, it begins to turn into two atoms chlorine monoxide and oxygen. The chlorine that's produced here basically destroys the ozone layer and it's his enemy. Scientists say that all the CFCs we sent to space are gonna be there and have effects for up to 150 years. After some research, they realize that all lives on Earth are in danger because of this, and that includes plants. There has been a lot of natural disaster, but this was a disaster that actually made the world come together to get rid of CFCs. Like Rio de Janeiro in Brazil has a lot of pollution, but to solve this, the entire world is not gonna come together to do this. 
Dr. Solomon says the reason the whole world got together is because the entire world was in danger, and that includes the big dogs. Another reason that the whole world got together was that replacing chlorofluorocarbon or CFC was extremely easy. The AC unit in your car, house, or refrigerator, inside them, there was a gas called R12, and R12 is a CFC. In a very short period of time, countries change R12 to R134A. There was another CFC called R22 that was used in industries, like industrial fridges and stuff, and that changed to R434A. We could say this was a very unique thing to have the entire world come together to sign one agreement, something that has never happened before. In the 1980s, the subject of destroying the ozone was agreed by everybody, and they would talk about it everywhere, and that includes movies. In the year 1987, every country in the world got together in the United Nations and signed the Montreal Protocol, a protocol that stated, to stay alive and continue life, we have to all get together and eliminate CFCs. The problem with the ozone wasn't an old issue either. This was very recent, meaning 1985, and two years later, they signed a protocol like this. After the Montreal Protocol, the size of the ozone layer stopped growing. But it takes 18 years until scientists realize in 2005 that the ozone hole is getting smaller. Or in other words, it was repairing itself. The way they see it, by the year 2060, the ozone hole will be completely rebuilt. After CFC or chlorofluorocarbon, HFC or hydrofluorocarbon was used. This gas does not affect the ozone layer whatsoever, but it's still a problem. HFC is a greenhouse gas that affects climate change. The reason they call it a greenhouse gas is that the more of this gas builds up inside the atmosphere, that causes inside the atmosphere to get hot like a greenhouse. And this is a huge issue in climate change, which we made a video on. I hope to solve other issues on Earth, all countries all around the world get together like this and agree on something instead of fighting with each other. The ozone absorbs many of the sun's ultraviolet 